And hello, we meet again. Hey, we meet again, hello. Hello, this is Kelsey Hammond. <laughs> and that's some guy named Chuck. That's yeah, me, so. hi. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. They, hi, Mom. <laughs> They're the usual suspects, and you are the champions. Yes, sir. Last time we saw you, we were at uh, Battle Bowl. I'm sorry, no, we weren't. We were at Mega Bowl in the Southeast. We won't talk about that. We will not talk about that, but we are going to talk about your opponents, the challengers. Feels like family. If you, they are the Schofields. How you doing? How you doing? Doing all right. I got a Frank and a Rex. Yes, a Rex and a Frank. Yes. Whatever you want to deal with it. So, first time out here. Yes, sir. So, what is the strategy is to knock them out? Because they've been here for a while. They have. It's We're going to do our game and just do what we could do. Just try to make our shots, make good spares, hit them where it counts. Where it counts. Now, some guy named Chuck. I know how much fun you had over there in the South, which was none. Anything that you... Oh, yeah. Anything that you're going to take from that experience into this matchup? Uh, no. We're going to let go of that match. Yeah, we don't even talk about, about it. We forget about it. We don't care. No. You, you definitely were not there. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right on that. Your words cannot be spoken. Anyway, I know you've got some redemption. This is your first shot. Good luck at, to everybody. Good luck. Anyway, I am Gordon Pepper. Joining me is the former East Cruiserweight Champion, Mr. Malachi Moore. How you doing, sir? Good afternoon, Gordon. How you doing, sir? Doing okay, doing okay. We are here at it, Westbrook Lanes. And we're here at Westbrook Lanes, and what feels like forever since Mega Bowl, which was a number of fantastic matches happened. Uh, the North actually won more of them over the South. However, one of the matches the North did not win was Classic Tag or Cap Tag, however you want to look at it, with the team of Kelsey Hammond and Chuck Wallace, or AKA some guy named Chuck. Yes. And they are now, Chuck is starting this matchup, and they are going up against the challengers from Hell Yeah, the Schofields. And I know that you took some notes. So, so Mr. Brain, as is your nickname, tell us a little <laughs> bit about the challengers. Okay, the challengers are Rex. And Frank Schofield, they're part of uh, Hell oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is true. They're putting a the part of PA North Division. They're both a down and in shooters. Uh, looks like uh, the machine, which is uh, Rex, he's more of the more established bowler. Uh, Frank, uh, from what I've seen, can be up and down as as a bowler. And they come from a division that is not as strong as the PA South, which is where the champs come from, the usual suspects. Uh, a little bit of an editorial note here. Not, I'm not saying that Malachi Moore is biased by any stretch of the imagination, but could you kindly tell us what district you're from, sir? I'm from the PA South. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody knows that you know that they are good. Now, how did how did uh, Rex and uh, Frank Schofield get here? They I'm assuming that you know the answer. You're going to tell yeah, us. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Their first match was a vacant, so they of course you you win versus the vacant. They had to make sure they paid. Then they paid. They bowled against Extreme Chaos, which is which in, entailed Rachel Hurst mm -hmm. and Ed Demaro, and they unfortunately they swept uh, Extreme Chaos 4-0. And now they the next match that they had was against a friend of mine named Bill Crone. Well, that would and, be class acts. And Jarrell Scott, which were class acts, very good gentlemen. They they actually won out a 4-3 matchup, and that's how they got to this matchup. Now, the, case, the thing, the question is going to be today is here at Westbrook Lane, they're all bowling on lanes three and four. The question is going to be who can carry the most? Right now, uh, Frank is up, uh, Schofield is up, and he had a, a, they both had ten nines, they had a nine uh, spare, but now he throws eight count. The question is going to be who can carry the most often in this match? I like Chuck and uh, the, the former Vixen champion, uh, Miss Hammond. Northeast to win Vixen. this match, exactly. Northeast, Northeast Vixen, Vixen, I'm sorry. champion, Kelsey exactly. Hammonds. Now, I think there's a couple of things that are going to be in play. I absolutely think that you are right in terms of who can carry. However, the other aspect that I think may come in play, it's starting to get warmer outside. Yes. The lanes are right by the exit door because we're on lanes three and four. <laughs> how tacky is the footing going to be on the approaches and how is the humidity going to affect the lanes? It may not just be about carry, it may also be about ball precision. That is correct. And, now, and Westbrook is notoriously known for, as an alley that if, you can't spray the ball around. If you don't hit the ball dead on, you're gonna pay for it and pay for it dearly. Chuck Wallace right now with a strike. 
Usual suspects with a quick two-pin lead. For everybody that's joined, joined us, you didn't miss anything except me talking with an interview. We are starting game one. This is the best out of seven match. Whoever wins four out of three games wins. By the way, in case you haven't seen how tag team works, we'll do a quick, a very quick 30-second blurb on that. The first bowler on each team, in this case, Chuck, for usual suspects. Or Frank. For and Frank. And, and Frank, uh, for hell yeah. They will bowl three frames. They must bowl three frames. No, they cannot bowl any less than that. And I'm pretty sure Chuck may not want to bowl any more of that after leaving the Greek church. <laughs> However, after the third frame is done, you have the option to tag in your partner. There must be four tags, no more, no less. Whoever threw the first ball in the game must throw the last ball in the game. And that is how it works. If you violate any of those rules, you automatically lose the game. If both teams violate the rules, then the game is thrown out and we start this all over again. And the team with the highest score without violating the rules wins. And that's almost certainly where Chuck did not want to throw the ball and he's already kicking at the footing. Well, Again, look, I think that footing and unwanted violence against a chair. <laughs> well, it looks like here Chuck, Chuck uh, was rushing to the line. He didn't take his time like he did the first two shots. And therefore, his hand came across his body. He left a split, the Greek church split. So in other words, he played a little Tetris. Exactly. Which was Russian. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I love that game, by the way. <laughs> now the question is, see if Frank can capitalize on that, on that split. Well, if Frank does capitalize on the split, hell yeah, he's going to have the lead in this game, game one. And ooh, he almost did the exact same Wallace did. Now, I will have, to say, I will have to say, watching Frank in the, uh, during the practice, he seemed to be missing the, court, the, the balls, the uh, pins to the right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can pick up the three to the right here. Frank's name is Frankenberry. Frankenberry. That's in the cereal. That's his nickname. <laughs> that is his nickname. I. Yeah, Frankenberry is a fun cereal. Uh oh. No, he got he it. He picked it up. He got enough on it. Let's put it that way. But yeah, this is, I, I didn't like how he threw it out. I, no. thought, I did not think that ball was going to come back. Exactly. That's how he was practicing in the in the beginning. So the question is going to become, can he? Be break, remain consistent. Now, he just tags his brother Rex, so let's see what happens from there. That's tag number one. They have three tags left. Usual suspects hasn't used a tag, but I suspect they're going to quickly, and there's a strike. And he went jersey for that strike. Nothing wrong with jersey. Actually, we are well, in jersey, the, so, so the ball crosses Brooklyn. over. It's Brooklyn. That is correct. He went is to it Brooklyn. Philadelphia? Maybe because we are in South Jersey. Maybe it's Philadelphia. Uh, no, we're going to Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, ball didn't go to Philadelphia. Chuck Wallace still in there, maybe because he threw a strike on this lane in the second frame. Chuck just, Chuck just has to take his Down time, that's all. Well, certainly Good looked shot. like he took his time there, and he did. See the difference in how his approach to the, to the line? He took his time, he was settled, he, he looked at his mark, and he followed through easily. Now, is he going to tag in Kelsey? He's looking for Kelsey to tag. He looked at her, then he looked her off. So that may have been a mistake, being as though he left a split the next time. Yeah, see I it. think that's a mistake also. I agree with you. Let's see if he takes his time. If he takes his time going to the line, then we'll see what happens. In the words of the I Believe the Gap Band, take your time, do it right. He's take his time, nice shot, going to the pocket. Take he almost did it right. Leaves, hmm. leaves the tempin. That's true. Disagreement between uh, Kelsey and, uh, yeah, a little and Chuck. Bit, a little, little like, bit of a twitty twitty well, thing yeah, here. She looks like, why didn't you tag? Why didn't you tag me, Chuck? That's what I'm sensing. I'm, I, we can't hear their conversation, but she had a little we displeasure on her face. Yes. We did hear something. We don't necessarily know what the something was. It certainly wasn't. I hope you have a great Mother's Day weekend. Yes. Mother's Day weekend's coming up a couple weeks. Yes, in a couple of weeks. What, do you have any idea which, what to get, any suggestions for getting mothers for Chris, for uh, Mother's Day? I would suggest for everybody that's bowling, I maybe one half of a title belt. Hmm. That, that'd be nice. Picture with mommy with the belt. Memories last forever. Also, what's lasting forever is a double. Rex goes in, tags Frank. That's tag number two. So they've already tagged him twice. Usual Suspects has tagged zero times. Yes, that is correct. The question is, when are, when are they going to let Rex, if, if it was me, I would have let Rex bowl at least two more frames and then tag again and, and let it uh, towards the end of the match. This is why. Yeah. Because Frank does not have Play the a hot good, hand. Exactly. Play the hot hand. You're absolutely right on that. I'm but, giving the brain credit. He's got a nice, sharp brain today so far, <laughs> as of now. Thank you, sir. But all they did was allow 
uh, use of Sussex an opportunity to get back into this match. When yeah, they, if, if Rex had to stay on, if say he threw two more strikes, now they blow the doors down, and no matter what Frank does, it wouldn't matter. And Frank doesn't pick it up. Let's see if yeah, they Frank, tag or if, if they continue to allow Frank to, to bowl again. Well, we're going to find out later because now it is usual suspect's turn. Okay, Kelsey has decided Chuck's going to throw one more ball over there, which is the correct idea because, again, two strikes over there. Two strikes on lane four. Well, my thing is this. If you haven't, if you haven't tagged yet and you're going into the sixth and seventh frame, when are you going to get your four, your four tags in? I, I sense seven, eight, nine, ten would be my thoughts. All right, well, Chuck did get a strike on that one, but it may be too little too late. Oh, not at all. And not only is it not too little too late, it's only an 18. Now I don't know where your brain is. It's a less than 10 pin deficit. If Kelsey throws a double here, usual suspects take the lead. It, and well, here's tag number one. Remember, they take the lead, but they, but uh, Hell yeah, it still has to bowl in seven frames, so they're not going to take the lead. Yes, they will. They'll take the lead they, if, by they the They will, band. and I'll explain momentarily, Mr. Brain. And, ooh. Any oh, other no. questions? Any other questions? Well, they would have taken the lead because the best Hell yeah could have done is a mark in the seventh, and they would right. have been facing a double. So right. they would have lost another 10 pins, so, and therefore they would have given up the lead. So even after Usual Suspects picks this up, Hell yeah would still go ahead. Well, Usual, by, well... If they doubled, they would not have gone ahead. But because it wasn't a double, you're absolutely right. However, a double, they would have taken the lead. That's right. I see what you're saying, Gordon. Because if they doubled, usual suspects, if they go out the door, it goes 232. The best Hellier could have done is 230. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon, for correcting me, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> the, the brain is good on the logic. He's not good on the math. Well, the math, At least you not, know, not yet. We all can't do the math very well, but... All right, so Frank is still Frank, in. I still think that's a mistake. I do too. Especially now because an open, they will lose the lead if he opens up right here. Oh, there's went a Philly shot. He went, he went Brooklyn again. He went Philly. <laughs> yeah, Philly. Okay, we'll go with Philly, but he went Philly. I, I'm not feeling Frank at all. We're in, all we're this in game. South Jersey. We're in Philly. That's true. Rex right. needs, now, Rex Rex needs to take in. this to the to the first, second, and from the eighth, ninth, and the beginning of the tenth game on the tenth frame, allow Frank to finish it off since he started. Yeah, now Frank only needs to throw the last ball in the tenth frame for this account. Double right here would be a big no, sir. Mm -hmm. Ten pin. That's huge. That's allowing uh, user Sussex to stay in the game. And again, you're looking at it from going out the door. Yeah, uh, hell yeah, can go out for a 2-10 because of the lack of a double. Usual suspects, if they go off the door, 2-12. So that right is, now they are not leading the match, but they could. And, and that is not going to help that at all. That is huge. Oh, my that goodness. That is a huge open right there. Somebody call the cops. I, I don't think uh, that, that that was a self-inflicted mugging right there. <laughs> you saw where that uh, ball was. Man, he, he wasn't even close Can't to the Can't mug yourself tip, that often. Oh, but, my oof. goodness. Did you see that? I, I saw it, and more importantly, I saw where it didn't go. Oh, I, man. I, and I am wondering, again, if that footing, if that tackiness is making any sort of thoughts here. Ooh, All right, he stays that, out of trouble, 4-7. Yes. Did not tag. I'm sort of fascinated by that. Well, to me. As a makeable spare. Right. And, that, and again, if she makes a spare, usual suspects will have to lead by two pins. Yes, that is correct. Now, keep in mind, and this is one of the reasons why I went, huh? Chuck never tagged back in. No, so this right is now, this their, one tag. This their front, first tag. That's so it. You would have to think Chuck That's, is going to have to show up in the ninth frame here. I think that's what they're talking about right now, but they're going to have to do back to back tags. Yeah, ex except Rex. This is usual suspect's second tag. Check his back up. You're uh, not up yet. <laughs> if Chuck, this is not the, the only problem is this is not the lane that Chuck normally strikes on. No, it's not. That's the one that he opened on, and that's the one that's there. And, and I agree with you. I sort of question why you didn't go back and forth on that. Exactly. To me, now he's talking to himself. Sometimes when you do that, it means that the game is getting the best of you at the moment. You need well, to have a clear head. If you're talking to yourself, do you like the conversation that you're currently having? <laughs> Not if you're using expletives. <laughs> bleep, 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 bleep. 
So Chuck is going to have, see, I would have tagged and had Kelsey, Kelsey to pick that 10 pin up. I would have too. She's a very good 10 pin shooter, so. Well, the other thing is just keep in mind, by doing it this way, whatever Kelsey leaves, if it's not a strike, Chuck has to pick it up. Exactly. The, the only concern that I have is going into the 10th frame, if you haven't been striking the whole time in the match, anything can happen. Right now, nobody's been striking consistently the whole match. That now is Rex correct. is up. Ninth frame. It's the one person that's consistently been able to throw strikes, and there's another one. Now, so now that he just tagged number he just four. four. That is the final one. They are now good. But the only problem is they're not good because the way Frank's been throwing the ball. That's true. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, that is true. They're, they are good in the essence of they have their fate in their own hands. If they go out the door to 198, and versus a 189 for usual suspects. So first shot here is big. If, if he doubles, challengers will take game one. First shot here over by Frank. That ball looks decent, a little bit high. I told, what did I just say, Gordon? I know what you said, I agree with you. Okay. I didn't disagree with you at all. Now, the question becomes, can Frank pick this up? Well, and, and here's a huge thing. If he picks it up, then usual suspects has to show up. If he doesn't pick it up, then usual suspects doesn't even need a mark if my math is correct so this is huge and but again the, he can't tag in rex he's got to do this all by himself and he will the only other question can becomes the tagging situation for usual suspects well kelsey's got kelsey's got to go in now she's got to throw that ball right and then she has to tag and then chuck. She, and well, chuck's got to throw the last ball so if she strikes that's great because then he only has to throw the last ball they can keep it in there if she doesn't Chuck's got to make the spare. Yes. And also keep this in mind. If she doesn't strike, pin count is huge. Him pin count now is really huge. Because the best that she can do in order for them to win, she needs a strike. Yes. She need, they need two strikes. They cannot. No. They only need one. However, and a big however here. That's true they, for they've the They've got to fill. That's true. She cannot throw anything less than nine. If she throws an eight, they lose. That is correct. Here's a shot from Kelsey. This is for game one. Ooh. It's an eight, the game's over. It doesn't even matter if Chuck makes a spare. That is because, correct. Because of the nine, because of the fill, it is now seven. That the is correct. The best they can do now is a 177. Hell yeah, we'll take game one. Hell yeah, has won the first game. I'm shocked. Uh, usual suspect is currently not bowling like the champions that they are. Well, the, the other question becomes, and you said it, how much of this was just by bad tagging? Because you had to put her in that spot. Exactly. And you had to put her in the spot, which is where Chuck has been throwing strikes the whole entire game exactly. one. Exactly. So I'm they took questioning away their the tag strategy they, here. Exactly. They, there's no strategy that they're using. A couple of times, I felt as though that Chuck should have tagged to uh, Kelsey just to make sure that they had options towards the end of the match. Chuck could have could have bowled out on the lane that he's been shooting really well on and got strikes. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things that we will be discussing. At the end of game one, challengers 178, usual suspects 166. Hell yeah, it's up one zip. And now we're starting game two, so now Rex will be starting and Kelsey will be starting. Yes. The other thing, I always like to see Kelsey get warmed up in, in the match. I felt as though that the number of uh, shots that Chuck took in the first game, he's warmed up, but now you pretty much still Kelsey's still frozen a little bit I'm, I want to see how easy I want to see how comfortable she is going in the second game I'm not sure I agree with you there I, I think Kelsey is warmed up and comfortable but in that situation and it's nothing against Kelsey she's really good in her own right she's a former Vixens champion she won a battle bowl north versus southeast Vixens match so she's been in these position before the bigger problem is that on lane four she's been shooting spares whereas Chuck Wallace has been shooting strikes Chuck well, may need a GPS for lane three, but lane four, he was shooting strikes. What I'm referring to is this right here. When you, I, I watched Kelsey enough to know when she comes out, the ball is nice and smooth. She, the ball is pretty much being dropped here. So mm -hmm. that's what I meant by her not being, feeling comfortable. You watch as this match goes on, how much, how, how smooth she'll begin to throw her ball better. I agree with you. The more warmed, I agree with you. The more warmed up she is, the better she gets. Right. Which again also begs the question, if you knew Chuck was struggling, why did you have him throw most of game one? Well, that's something that they were, oh. Uh-oh. Started off with a miss. What's that saying, spares win games? Spares win games, they definitely would have won game one. Yes, it should, yes it would have. They so just going, have. So going into the second frame, hell yeah, <laughs> takes a lead over the champs. 
quick lead, but it's still a lead. Though I don't think anybody right now, and I'll even say this for hell yeah, even though they took game one, they took game one with a 178. Yes. So clearly no one is comfortable yet on three and four. Exactly. And we'll see if Kelsey likes that shot better. She and does. she comes back with a strike. Way to go, Kelsey. Well, and again, I will, I will say this because again, you're the brain. Chuck Wallace, no problem on lane four. Kelsey, no problem game three. Why are we not doing that piece of strategy, sir? Well, you know what? I'm not in their heads. You know, sometimes people do uh, strategy by feel. And I guess sometimes, you know, it can matter of a communication between the two players. Now, remember, this is Chuck and Kelsey's first defense as the champion. They beat uh, Jeremy and uh, Jeffrey Geller from the Goon Squad. That is true, right, and, they, so and they did it right before Mega Bowl. Right, right before but Mega it's Bowl. Not, but it's not their first team, is it? Not, not their first match as a team, though. No, no, I'm sorry. This is their first title defense. I should have yes. said that. Yes, I'm sorry. So they might have a little bit of jitters. I'm going to get. I'm going to say that that that, that, that factor is into take it. Take a yip factor. I'm assuming to spare. Well, everybody knows, no matter what, when you come out and you're the champion, you have to defend your title. The, the, the mark, the target is on your back. Target's so on you. Yes, yeah, so the, there's a certain amount of pressure that comes with that, that especially true. since you don't necessarily want to lose the title after your first time out. You do not. Let's see what Rex does with his, sec, his uh, third shot. And he throws a strike. That's his first strike of the game. And uh, we'll, well, first strike uh, for hell, first, yeah. For not hell, the first yeah, I'm strike sorry. The game. For, for the second game, I'm for, sorry. First strike of the game for right the second now goes game. to, well, no, first strike of the second game goes to usual suspects. Well, you know what I'm saying, for them. <laughs> I'm talking about for them, Gordon. Come on, don't make it so difficult. <laughs> I'm calling facts, sir. Well, it would oh, be less difficult if, you, if well, we got in facts. Now, if Kelsey throws the third strike of the game, usual suspects will take the lead, but she won't. Three, six, nine, ten. She doesn't look, look like. Looks like that's the that's the lane for Chuck, and Kelsey can bowl her her shot on three. Well, to be fair, Kelsey had no choice. She's got to throw on three. That's you true. have to strike the first. That's true. Frames. That's true. So the the most important question is, will Kelsey pick this up? That's not an easy spare to pick up. Not an easy spare to pick up. Looks good to me, though, uh, and I would be wrong, Tempin. So Kelsey it. right now, two opens on lane four and a strike on lane three. Now, fortunately for her in the fourth frame, she's going back on frame three. I would imagine that she would probably want to stay in there for at least the fourth frame to go on, go on lane three. However, and a big however here, hell yeah, already up by 20, possible 30. And if you also notice, both Kelsey and Chuck are sliding their shoe across the lane approach. So clearly footing may be an issue for one or both of them. Will it be an issue for her in this shot? Maybe, 4-7. It could be an issue as your approach get to the line and you go to release the ball. Absolutely. So this, is, this is definitely not a give me. I'm just, I'm curious to see what they can do to the lane approaches. Maybe for a little powder. I mean, I know technically you can't. Not supposed to do that, yeah. Just because you're not supposed to doesn't mean that you shouldn't. You can get a brush and go up and down, and then you might slide a little bit better. There are different tricks that you can use. But the question becomes, can they settle down and start throwing strikes to get back in this match? That's what's going to be required right now because they have two opens already. Well, the, the, it, the, bigger que the bigger question becomes, will, hell yeah, start striking and stringing so that it won't matter what usual suspects does. Which even, even put even more pressure on, on usual suspects. And sometimes if they do it like four or five in a row, that could get in their head for even for the third, for the next game. Absolutely. So Frank is tagged in. That is tag number one for hell yeah. They have three more to go. And if Frank can strike here, that would be a huge lift for hell yeah. If that ball roll in there, and it won't because I know it's high. And, ooh. He got away. He got, he, he got lucky. That 10 Stayed pin away went from down. the land of the red numbers. Yes. yes. He said the land of the red numbers. I like that. He's got a four and seven that comes up. Should be able to make this. Like you said, should. Should. We've already seen some strike, uh, some spare shenanigans from both teams, but he will make that one. Way to go, Frank. Hell yeah, up by 22 pins as we go into the fourth frame. Both teams are on spares if you're just joining us. Challengers right now lead the champs one zip as we go into the middle of game two. Challengers are up by 22. 
Frank and Rex are chatting. Well, let me ask you a question, uh, Gordon. Ask me anything you want while we have this little mini break here. Let's, let's have a little <laughs> just, chat. To you. Just like in the first game, mm -hmm. it didn't appear as if Kelsey and uh, Chuck were using any strategy in reference to, you, you know, make the best of what they both can do. Would you tag Chuck if you were Kelsey to to bowl on lane four? Absolutely. That's I it. opened twice on lane four, and Chuck's been throwing nothing but strikes. I sort of questioned that strategy in game one. But notice the body language. And I know that the camera really can't move over there, but since a little tripping outburst by Kelsey in the middle of game one, Kelsey is all the way in the back. Chuck, who's usually in the back, is now all the way in the front. There's a little gap there versus the brothers who are pretty much next to each other, yet Rex in the front chatting with Frank. I'm not saying that the tide's not gonna turn here, but what I am saying is look at the communication. You have one team that's right next to each other chatting and another team that's far away from each other and clearly they're not chatting. Right, and Tater Tot is up on lane four. Yeah, and I which think that's a mistake. That we both think that's a mistake. So now the question becomes, because she's had two opens, why isn't Chuck up? Well, let's see here. Kelsey can figure it out. If you look at the body language, yes, it's it's all too. Now they're not even talking. That's no. that's. It's not good body language right now. No, it's not. And you so, need some sort of charge. I know when I was in the tag team series with Scott Santos, we never got into this because usually Scott yapped at me or I yapped at him, saying, "Hey, get your hat out of your dairy air, so to speak." Normally, as a, as a teammate, what I would be looking for is, hey, what am I doing wrong? This is what helps when you talk about a tag team a situation. And now we have tag number one going on in the usual suspects. Kelsey checks, Chuck in. That is number one. Both teams have three tags left to go. And this is not Chuck's best uh, lane in terms of rolling maybe, the ball. Maybe he has found something. I don't think it's so. It's the only thing that I can think of. Like I said, well. he, got, he, got, he got lucky on that one. Okay, well, it's a strike. All the fins went down. It's not the best strike I've ever seen. <laughs> That's true. But the strike and, went down. And, and the funny part is, is that, oh, they haven't even bowled yet. Okay. All right, here's tag number three. Yes. Rex for, is in. For hell yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, that's tag number two, I two. should say. Rex I was about is to in. say, yeah, two. Rex is in six frame. That ball looks good. It is. And the big question is, can, if he doubles up, this could really blow the game wide open. Well, it, I'm not sure about blowing the game wide open yet, but if he does double, that is going to force usual suspects to to strike and to keep it within 20, because if they don't, if they still continue to struggle, then this game could get away from them as we go into the seventh frame of game two. Well, at least Kelsey and uh, uh, Chuck are back together again, talking in the back about the game. That's better. Ooh. Okay. They, they have to thank the four pin ferry up there because that's what's still there. Actually, no, no, I'm sorry, the seven pin. No, four pin, I was right. In all fairness, the house in, in Westbrook Lanes, this house down here is not a hook in lanes down on the lower end as opposed to the higher end of the house. It's, so, it's not, you've got to, and I've commented more than enough times on lanes one through four, you've got to make precision shots here. You, you can't, yes. mixing traditionally here will not work. You'll wind up with something ugly or you'll get single pins. Sometimes playing through the- And if you plaque it, this is a placky house. Yes, sometimes playing through the middle with a ball that starts up early can help out a lot. Down and in will help, but you still have to put the ball where it needs to go. Exactly, and I would, down and in, I would play it more on the dots rather than on the arrows and go make from the dots to the arrows. Kelsey is back in in the seventh frame. That is tag two. Both teams with two tags. Now a strike here will cut the lead down from 20 to teens. And she gets it. That All is right. probably Kelsey's best shot that I have seen the whole entire match so far. I totally, wholeheartedly agree with you, Gordon. Remember we talked about earlier, and to me, Kelsey's gonna be the key to the usual suspects getting back in this match because she can, she can pull on a, a string of strikes. I and immediately tag number three goes over to Chuck. Chuck's they're, decided they're talking. maybe, oh, they're, they're trying a little bit. Maybe we're not gonna get tag number three. I would not do that. And I think they may be thinking about what we were talking about earlier. Kelsey has a good look on lane three, and Chuck well, has well, a Right now, she's got a good look on game on both of them. on lane yeah. four, and Chuck's got a good look on lane three. That's tag number three, you got one more. And Chuck once again did yeah, not man, strike on lane three. Both of us don't necessarily agree with with that, but I do agree with you. It looks like Kelsey now has got both looks on both lanes. Lanes. 
which makes you wonder maybe she should have stayed in one more time. Yes, I agree. Sometimes ego in this game can get the best of you. Well, I was going to say it's not her ego. It may have been Chuck's. Well, that's right now. It's got to look to make the spare, and he will. Okay, he picks it up. Yeah, back to back strikes. If it was me, I wouldn't let Kelsey bowl that next one because she was on a roll. She's locked in. But they still need to get at that time two, three more. Well, tags they need in. it. Well, they well they still need. Now they only need one more tag. One more tag. One more tag because once Kelsey comes in, this is Chuck's second appearance. So once Kelsey comes in, that's it. That's four tags. So, being so when as, she comes back in, she's finishing. Being as though Chuck is struggling, would you tag Kelsey in for the last two two frames? Let her roll the last two frames. That's what I would do. I think it really also depends if what opportunity Hell Yeah is going to give them. They still, they're still trailing by around 12, 11 pins, assuming that he makes a spare and against yes, spare middle of the That is correct. So this is their third tag. I should mention that. Frank is now back in in the eighth frame. So nope. they have one more tag. Once Rex comes in, it's Rex the rest of the way. Once Kelsey comes in, it's Kelsey the rest of the way. Right. And see, the thing was, I would have let Kelsey roll the, in that eighth frame and then Chuck come in the ninth and then Kelsey take it all the way out in the tenth. To me, you would have had, had three in a row. Chuck would have been on lane number four, which is where he strikes on. Not only would you have been three in a row, you would have been up. Yes. But more importantly, Chuck would have been bowling on uh, lane Chuck number would have four, been on, which is on where he's four. been shooting the best at. That's true. The whole obje objective is to put yourself in the best position possible. Right now, we have, hell yeah, up by 13. Both teams on spares going to ninth frame. Frank is still in, and I'm not sure if that is a good idea either. But what do we know? We're only we're, commentating. Yeah, we're not bowling. We're not bowling. Another four pin. Now, again, the next time Rex comes in, that's it. He's done. Or Frank is done, I should say. Yes, Frank is done. And to be honest with you, Frank is bowling better than I thought he would, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both, they're both not bowling bad. What's helping them as of right now is that neither Chuck nor Kelsey are carrying at this point. That is correct. If this turns into a carry, con carry contest, then we may be having a different conversation. However, right now, this is definitely not a carry contest. No, but, but guess what? Chuck is up on lane number four. And this is the lane that you said that he's good on. Yes, this is a very important shot for usual suspects to get back into this match. They cannot shut Hellier out. They can force them to double. And that's all you want to do. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, out of I trouble. Very out of trouble. That could have almost been a disaster. Now, the thing is, Chuck once again rushed to the line. Yes, he did. His, fi his feet were fast, which enabled, caused him to bring his hand across his body. Right now, three sixes up. Chuck not very thrilled about that. Yeah, I would say not. The question is, will Kelsey tell him what he's doing wrong? I'm sure that he will. Yeah, you, you look down there. He definitely did not like his feet or the approach or anything having to do with that. Yes. I'm sure that if he can change his shoes for slippers right now, he probably would do that because at least slippers he'd be sliding. Now, once again, this is, this, is, this is where the strategy comes in at. Would yeah, you, I'm, I'm not liking this strategy like, either. You have yeah. the person that, that is having issues with the footing all of a sudden coming up in the 10th frame. And if you're usual suspects, you're down by 14. In order to force Hellier to mark, you've got to strike out here. And Kelsey's been, got to be Kelsey strikes. has been rolling very good on this, on this pair. Uh, that one looks good. We finally got a strike on lane number three. But again, as I said, they need another one. Yeah, but who started the game? Kelsey's got to throw the last shot. Okay. They, they, have their, they have three tags. They only need one more. So Kelsey has to take the last shot. But Chuck can take this one. Either way, this has got to be a strike. Yes. If it was me, I would, I would put Kelsey in. At least Chuck took his time blowing the he ball. He did. That ball looks good. It is. But back-to-back -back strikes. Yeah, so now Kelsey must throw. And I'm sure they know that they do. Kelsey's coming in to take the final shot. Hell, yes. They, they definitely, well, well use Hell, yeah, needs a mark. Yes, they if need they a mark. they lose. Yes. And, and they, they also have to tag correctly. That is now, correct. Now, Frank is still there. Rex has to throw the last shot. And the question is, are they going to make Frank throw the first shot here in the 10th frame? And Kelsey gets a strike. So they strike out. 191. 191. 
the thing is, Gordon, like I said before. Uh, they're tagging in Rex immediately, so they're not even. They're not, they're not even playing gonna, around. No, they're not playing around here. As long because, you know, you, with, with Frank, you never know. If, you don't never know what's going to happen. Well, I, right now with Rex, you also never know what's going to happen at this point. Well, I think Rex is the better bowler. All right, well, this is for game two right here. If he throws a strike. Woo! Uh -oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There's a big uh-oh. If it was just a five pin and the ten pin went down, that's one thing. Now, did you He's see? Convert. Did you see what happened there? Uh, uh, I, I think Gordon? I saw Kelsey coming down there with some crazy glue during the bowling <laughs> approach and put, <laughs> sticking the ten pin down. That's, I could have sworn that I saw that, or, or maybe somebody in the back. Unfor He's unfortunately, got Rex brought oh, his hand across second. his body. Let's see if he makes a spare here. Make the convert. No. No. He, he uh, Rex brought his hand across his body. Once again, if, you know these. In bowling, you know you have to be you have to be under control at all times. They gave that away, that game away, uh, well, Gordon. Sort of, sort of like what Usual Suspects did, gifts for everybody. That's at the right. end of game two, Usual Suspects, 191. Hell yeah, 181. We are tied, one game apiece. The question now is. But but and again, I think the footing's got something to do with this. I really do because it doesn't seem like anybody there is comfortable. I don't. Nobody seemed to become, but that could be jitters as well. I'm. I'm. When I'm. When I'm watching uh, people's feet, nobody's getting stuck at the line. Nobody can complain that they got stuck at the line. I it's don't, all I them. Don't, I don't know about that. Look, watch, I, watch, watch, watch Chuck's feet. He's not stuck. He's not sticking. Well, now he's not stuck. And Chuck's starting game one with a strike. And if I'm hell yeah, I may be drinking into the glass of regret at the bar after that one. If you if you won that game, you're up 2-0. And all of a sudden, even if they get back into it, you know, even if they win this game, it is 2-1 and they still have control. Now it's 1-1, and you're starting to see Chuck here get a little bit of confidence on the line. That could, that could be trouble for hell yeah. The main thing for Chuck is that he has decided to slow his feet down, which is very good. And by him slowing his feet down, he's throwing better shots. And Frank throws a strike. What would you think about right that strike? Uh, ugly. That's what I thought about that strike. <laughs> uh, here's what I thought about the strike. All the pins went down. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing the Olympic judges were not here, judging, being able to add extra quality to those grades. Exactly. <laughs> At least Frank did get a, a strike. Let's see if he can duplicate that on lane three. Maybe he needs some fruity pebbles instead of Frankenberries. Or, or blueberries, because that 10th that frame in the second game, boo. <laughs> Second shot here. Okay, Frank Frank's start. lucky strike. That was magically delicious. Now that was his best shot that he threw all uh, throughout the all three games. And by the way, for everybody complaining about me at the fun play, you can say I'm a serial killer. Ha 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 something else, Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Some of you are going to be like, bring right, back Shonda. Bring Chuck, him back. This is Chuck's. Uh, oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, he, he got a double, but the wrong double variety. 2-8, and he's kicking He's kicking the floor again. I, again, I say this, I still don't think he's comfortable with that approach. And you he's might, scuffing. If you're scuffing yeah. like that, that's a sign of not happy with approach. He may not be sticking, sticking, or, but he may... Or it, it, it could be, because I didn't see nothing wrong with his, with his approach. It could be a, an excuse. Doubt it. I didn't see him stick at all. It's not about sticking. You know that you don't have to stick. It's about planting. I make despair. Right. He, he doesn't seem to be having trouble planting, but okay. We're going we're gonna to go with that. I'll because bring Chuck over. We, we can ask him. Yeah, we can ask him. Because he seems to be coming through the ball nicely. So you can't say that. Well, lane three is coming through the ball nicely. Lane four, he is not. Before he was. This is the first time that he, he hasn't been really coming through. Third frame here, that bulk's tight. Oh no, did not hook him like the other one did. Was it Two, the four, five. Yeah, he didn't he's not coming through the ball. He, well he's definitely not coming through the ball. Right. But that's also could be because you're too worried about your feet. You're not worried about your arm. So the other two times when he struck, that he was it was it I mean you can't have it both Wait, ways. You can, but we'll ask him. Okay. That's true. Regardless, if say it is, that can't be the reason why you don't win. Well, it could be. We'll see. He won't make the spare. So I'm gonna let's call Chuck over here and Chuckster. Chuck. He's he's frustrated right now. He'll be all right. Yeah. 
So well, I'll say this though, he's he's putzing around with his wrist and that would be similar to what you were talking about in terms of not falling through with a shot. Right, and, and that's all I was saying because when he was striking, he would follow his hand all the way through. He was very comfortable and he finished his shot. In bowling, you have to finish your shot in order for your ball to, what you do at the top, but end up what you do at the bottom. Frank right now looking for three in a row, and he well weave three, but that's not exactly the three in a row that he was looking for. One three eight. Well, I, Frank, not comfortable here. Not, I, again, none of the bowls are comfortable at this point. I think what the problem is is that everybody's trying to get their ball to come into the pocket a certain way because the ball doesn't hook into the pocket. Do you think they're trying too hard? Yes, they're trying too hard. That's why their hand is coming across their body. Frank looks like he'll. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now, usual suspects doesn't have any opens, but Frank just did. Like well, I said before. Hallie had the double, but the open more than undercompensates for that, and usual suspects have the lead back. And almost immediately, tag number one comes in, and Rex, come, Rex comes in at the quickest time for him to do so. And that was a good move, as far as I'm concerned. Let's see what uh, Rex does on this first ball he throws. And he throws a strike. It's about how the, your ball enters the pocket when the lane does not is not forgiving and allow you to the ball to walk into the pocket. You're going to have to do something. How you finish the shot? Frank is bringing his hand up quickly. He's getting his ball started up early. It's, as it as it proceeds down, it's, it's, it's gripping the lane and smashes the pocket. Now this is uh, Chuck's best lane, so let's see if he strikes here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep him in frame four. That's and a good I ball. think it's going to be. Oh, Ooh. it's a good ball. But did you see that ball squirrel in there? Yes. That ball squirmed right in there. It yes. did something different than what it's been doing. Yes, because he put a little bit more extra on the ball and it hooked real early. He just didn't get it out to the, his mark the way he needed to have it at. But Chuck is talented enough to be able to finish the, the shot. And but he just has to keep his eye on his mark and get his ball to the mark so he it can do finish off like he wants to. He's not bowling bad. He just has to. He just has to pay attention where he puts his ball at. Chuck makes a spare. Usual suspects will maintain their lead, and albeit a very thin lead right now, but they'll maintain it. Fifth frame, and Kelsey's still hanging out there. Maybe you want to go get her soda or something? We'll get her, we'll get her some Frankenberries. I, I don't think she's going to want any Frankenberries. <laughs> Chuck right now, fifth frame, usual suspects up by one. Almost a midway point of game three. We are tied one game apiece. And you Chuck see right now looking to try to get a bigger lead up there. There's a nice strike. See the difference when he follows through? Even though he, now that time it looked like he stuck when he got to the line. Yeah. But he still followed through. He got the ball out where he needed to go, and now he has a double. Well, he threw a strike. I'm going to be real curious to see... Um, how, they, how that plays out. Rex is looking to take the lead with double right here for Hell Yeah. That's no, not, well, no going to be way. a strike. No. no. No, way too late. Got a bucket. Finishing down here is so important. Well, yeah. right now they're chatting about whether or not the ball hooked or didn't hook. And Frank said, and you can hear him, that didn't hook. Yeah, that definitely didn't hook. Right, right now, no bowlers really figured out the correct hook. Sometimes it's hooking a little, sometimes it's hooking way too much. So now, talk to us, Mr. Brain. <laughs> You're in this situation. Do you have any sort of ball in your arsenal that you would be using at this point to try to carve out a line? Because right now, the best line that I see is one made out of split pea soup. And well, emphasis on the split. Ooh, and emphasis on the open. On the open. That's a hard, that's generally a hard uh, spare to pick up. One of the things I would do, I would love, I love to use my phase three, my uh, purple idol, Helios, balls like that that you know will break into the pocket. Sometimes you can use a uh, asymmetrical ball that's that's polished up that can go smash the pocket. You just have mm -hmm. to keep your speed up. And you, if you recognize early on that, that your ball is not breaking to the pocket, then I would go to a, a, a ball that holds the energy and, and, and smashes the pocket at, on the back end. Hell yeah, with tag number two over to Frankenberry. It leaves a seven pin. And I'm Afraid to say this, but looks like Frankenberry is bowling better than Rex at this point. At this point, I mean, it really doesn't matter who's bowling better. Right now, they're both be dazed and bewildered. Well, but I can I can say that about all four bowlers at this point. He will make the spare now. Do you see Kelsey here? It looks like Kelsey's going to take the tag. 
And she will. That is their first tag. Yes. They have three to go. And this is really important here. This may be the strike of not just the, the shot of not just the game, but the match. Because if Kelsey can throw a strike here, now they'll be up by more than 20, and they can start thinking about coasting at this point, and that's Hello. a shot. Now, did you watch how Kelsey released the ball and how her ball came back into the pocket? That's what they need. And, and see, to me, this is, a, at this point, it's about momentum in the tag team. If Kelsey throws another strike, the momentum is clearly uh, usual suspect's way. Yeah, that, that ball is height and tight, height and tight. That ball did not move. And not only would it be going the usual suspect's way, keep in mind, hell yeah, is only working on a spare. So even if they started to strike, they're still going to be down by 20 plus pins. And if Kelsey throws a strike here, it'll be 30 plus pins. Ooh. Ooh 10 pins. Left the 10 pins. Kelsey normally picks that up. For me, at this point, Gordon, I think the momentum switched at the end of the, of the second game. Oh, no, you mean with the five, with the five ten? I don't yes. disagree with you there. So that, that that's a killer. Because again, that could have been two zero. All the pressure in the world on usual suspects, exactly. but now it, it's one one. You gave, they and gave, it's the they, usual suspects that may be up two to one here, assuming Kelsey makes a special well. Yes, she does. That gave usual suspects life when they were on life support at the moment. Absolutely. And now. And go back, look at the communication now between both of them. If they lost that game, you could have seen Kelsey on lane one and Chuck all the way down on lane 42 <laughs> at that point. In maybe outside the door. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe going out, maybe ordering some of the uh, Westbrook pizza <laughs> that, that, they, uh, that they deliver over here. Yeah, they got that and barbecue, so. I love barbecue. Yes, I sure do, too. All right, let's see. Frank is back up. Is that a tag? Uh, no, that, not a tag. Frank okay. is still there. Let's see what Frank does with this ball. So two tags left from usual. Uh, two, I'm sorry, two tags left from hell yeah. Usual suspects have three tags that they need to do, and whatever he did in that ball, he didn't like it. Now you know it's funny. Ne neither team are getting the ball out to the right in order for the ball to enter into the pocket a certain way. Well, traditionally at Westbrook, that is where you don't throw the ball. Is uh, is uh, is outside coming in? So I can see why it's they don't want to. But if maybe it, was me, it would I be would worth throw, trying I, it out there to experiment right. a little bit. I was when Chuck made his his strikes. He he he. You get it down. You get it down 15, down to seven. You don't go past seven. You let the ball come back, and that's where you have to make sure you even have to exaggerate your release. Your All follow right, that's through. That's tag rather. team over tag number three. For Rex. And tag team over to Rex. For hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have one more tag left. We've only seen Kelsey once, and we're in the eighth frame. So we're going to be seeing a lot of flipping and flopping unusual suspects. Though, if they took a page out of your book, that's why they needed to do it, and they needed to do it at that point. Yes. Because again, usual suspects up by around 20. The only way they're going to lose this is if A, hell yeah, start stringing, and, we, and we're telling that they're not really capable of doing that right now, or B, usual suspects takes a trip to where hell yeah was game two, which is open land. Or C... They mess up on the tag. That too. That that is a very correct and valid C, I may add. I'm not a big fan of waiting till the tenth frame to finish out your tag because anything can happen. All right, tag number two to Chuck. A frame. Usual suspects has two two tags left. And right now they're up by a healthy 25 pins in their eighth frame. Chuck right now wanting to keep it there. Once again. Kelsey said, and I'm not sure if you heard it, Kelsey said in there, like she knew there was the shot. Like swimwear. In there like swimwear. And now and here's that, that tag that's that gotta tag be coming again. in. That yep. is correct. So there's nine. Now who's supposed to finish this game? Uh, Chuck's gotta throw the last shot. So All this right. is tag number three. And which is a now this is a great tag. Because no matter what, Kelsey can finish, can throw a strike here. This is her better lane here. She feels comfortable. If she throws a strike, they can just run off the sheet. She throws a strike. This game is almost mathematically almost. over. Not completely, Not but completely, almost. Not completely, but almost. Right. Here's good. a shot here. That ball looks good. It there is. is. Big shot Go from ahead. Kelsey Hammond. Go ahead, Kelsey. I'm sorry. We're not supposed to be biased. <laughs> Sir. You're, you're, you're called the brain. You're not called the unbiased brain. You're called the brain. <laughs> Strategy yeah, is all that I think about. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, hell yeah, the best they can do is a 200, which means if they go out the door, usual suspects will need to show up a little bit. Not a ton, but a little bit. If they go out the door and they're not, and there's a five pin. And it looks like to me that 
uh, Rex was pressing on that once again, trying to force a strike. And when you try to force a strike, and you don't just let the ball do the work and follow through. That's what happened. He brought his hand across his body again. Well, that ball just tucked over. No, that, ball, could, that ball wanted to go to Philadelphia. His momentum brought his hand ball across his body. Ball wanted to go to the live casino in Philly and That's true. play I, some pie gow poker, maybe some pie gow playing that. <laughs> I don't know what, what I'm playing tonight. What I do know is that if he doesn't make this, it's powder time, but he does make it. It's right on, on TV, too. Caffeine yes. TV. Caffeine TV missing a five pin. So oh. now mathematically the game is over because he did not throw a strike there. Usual suspects do not need a mark. And even if they go out, I believe they need four. They need four. If that Hellier is correct. strikes out. That, well, they need five, but yeah. Well, what, no, they need four. Four retired. What's a win? Because they'd be down by 11, and four times three off the double is, well, is that's 12, done. and we don't even need to worry the about it. The real Frank sewed up. Well, it looks like they've lost their confidence. Well, they, I don't know about the confidence. They definitely lost their line. Well, at least and one of them were at least bowling good. Now both of them are not on hell yeah. So now the only the only issue that they're going to have now is if usual suspect screws this up. That is Frank true. did come in, so their four tags are completed. Well, my question to you is this. Hell yeah is going to be down by two to one. Yes. What is it that you think they need to do in order to get back on track? Because clearly they fall apart. Hope that, hope at the that end of Kelsey the and Chuck screw this up. <laughs> because that's the wrong person bowling right now. This, you're still in tag three. Chuck's got to finish the game. There's one. That's a lot of confidence between teammates. That's a lot of confidence. Even though I'm sure, and I'm sure they knew, I'm sure they knew, and they figured it out. Okay, you can throw the one, and I can throw the other. I mean, mathematically, again, the game is over. So let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. uh, Gordon. Say Kelsey had an open, and she tagged Chuck. Wouldn't that be finishing the game? Yes. Okay. So there's no way in the world they would have messed that up, oh, right? Yes, there is a way that they can mess it up. If, if, if Kelsey, Kelsey finished did the not game, throw a strike. And then she went for the spare and she opened. Oh, if she then went, Chuck oh, Chuck doesn't go okay. back in for tag number four and they lose. That's true. That is true. Or if she hits, or if she strikes out and hits all three strikes and Chuck doesn't come in. Yes, that is true. But I don't think nobody wants to make that kind of mistake. I've seen it happen. Really? I've seen it happen. It wasn't, it's, it hasn't been on Caffeine TV yet, but I've seen it happen. And I went into the microphone and I said, what are you doing? And obviously I can't say anything. If you ask me, I can tell you. I can't well, who, go in there who was it? Who was you. the culprit? They can, they can scream at me. Uh, I'm not going to say who the culprit was. Oh, you're killing me. The uh, suspense I'm, I'm is killing me. I'm not going to say who the culprit was. I will say that he carries a little towel with him everywhere that he goes. Oh, 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 oh. I thought I was getting ready to say that that's who it was because I yes. think I was at that match. Uh, you you were not, but it was entertaining. At the end of game three, usual suspects 223, hell yeah, 165. Usual suspects up two to one. We're starting off with Rex, and there's a nice strike from him. Well, at this point... Hell yeah, it needs to win this game to pull it 2-2 and change the momentum of the game. Absolutely right. Without question, that needs to happen. Because the momentum, that open not only cost them game two, you could make an argument that they were flat out of the gates on game three, and it could have cost them that also. That is correct. They could have been up in a tough match. When you're going up against the champion, there's an old saying, you have to beat the champion. And not only you have to beat the champion, if you're going up against a team that you know is good, that you know is currently on the top of the mountain, that's a team that you need to beat, you cannot make any stupid mistakes and give them any sort of open momentum. Exactly. And that's what they did, 10th frame, game two. Will that come back to haunt them? Maybe. We'll see. Both bowlers coming out with strikes in the first frame. Going in second frame, Kelsey Hammond right now is up. That ball looks good. If it'll move a little bit, it does. Kelsey, over Kelsey. Is, Kelsey is throwing the ball very well. Well, uh, as you said in game one, once she gets warmed up, she's going to be really hard to beat. And that's one of the other reasons why you needed to take game two. You needed to give usual suspects as much stress and pressure and uncomfortability as humanly possible. Exactly. But instead of being up 2-0, now they are up 2-1. Question, what's that saying? Pressure burst pipes? Pressure, pressure either creates diamonds or destroys carbon. Ooh. Oh boy. Remember I said about trying to create your own shot or you create your own opportunity for a strike? Right now you created your own open. Oh, boy. That is the wrong double for X <laughs> as he leaves a 4-6. That is correct. That Not could be detrimental. Double. Yeah, that could be incredibly detrimental.
So I'm going to play team. I'm going to play. You're my teammate, uh, Gordon. Uh, that's so nice of you. So let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. If you and I were in this type of situation yes. where we just opened, yes. we're down two to one, mm -hmm. what would you be saying to me at this point? The G version or the R-rated version? Well, give me the G-rated. Okay. I w actually, I would be a nice teammate. Because I'm usually the nice one. I'd be like, all right, shake it off. Come on, you got it. You got to slide over a little bit, do something. That's encouraging. Move that. I want to be encouraging. Now, when I go with Scott and some other people, if I open, I will usually get the stare of death from the other person. <laughs> that doesn't quite help. Oh, well, no, what, it does. What, what, it, kind of, what kind of advice would you give but, me? But it does for me. I'm one of those bowlers where sometimes I do need the kick in the butt. Okay. Where sometimes it needs to like, okay, fine. Where did my focus go? It went there. All right, now I got to get my head out of my bleep and you know do that so it really depends on the person you seem like someone that you just get hard on yourself so i really don't have to get hard on you so just be like it's okay it's okay well, don't overthink what, what i don't I, want your brain to be as evaporate. a teammate i would want to know what i'm doing wrong oh no i would tell you what you're doing yeah wrong. that's that's what i'm trying to get at like in order for a team to win i tell you no matter what you sport you're in communication is very important on these things i would tell you to slow slow down and follow through thank you that's that. what I would tell you to do because, as you said earlier on, you've got to throw precision shots. You cannot be rushing. It, not here. Not in these lanes. There's plenty of oil. There's a limited amount of approach. Kelsey right now looking for three in a row, and that's too late. And just a reminder again, Westbrook, you light shots here don't carry. No, they don't. You really we have, have not to... seen a light strike yet this whole entire match. We've seen some Brooklyn's. We haven't seen anything light. You have to finish. You have to follow through, even exaggerate it sometimes, you know, for your your ball to come right into the pocket like you want it to. You do. However, thanks to Hellier's open, usual suspects do have a little bit of a cushion, assuming that Kelsey makes a spare here, and she will. Ooh. She had a very, if you saw that right arm, and, and Chuck said, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Kelsey is welcoming everybody. I don't know why she's saying you're welcome to that's, you. That's one of my. Unless uh, you had money invested no, 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 no. in this match, that's I'm one, not aware of. No, that's one of Matt's instructions. Uh, well, chance, thank you. When, I get, when, I, when someone on my team throws a strike or picks thank up you. a meaningful spare, I say, thank you. No, I, have to, I do that all the time. There you go. They, right now, Kelsey is being kept in, especially on the fourth frame, especially on lane three, and I would do the exact same thing, and that's why. That is why. Remember we said, remember we talked about earlier, Kelsey throws it very good on lane three, and Chuck does it very on lane four. This is, this is not, the bowling sometimes is not that hard. Bowling sometimes is very easy, but us as human beings like to make it a lot harder <laughs> than what we should be doing. That is true. The name of the game, as far as I'm concerned, is to win. Okay, Frank immediately tags in. There's tag number one. Looks like he has a urethane ball. Not sure urethane's going to do much good here at this point. But if I'm going to use it, if I here's why I would at this point. Okay. I have no line. I see Chuck is starting to get a line. Kelsey is trying to get a line. One of the things that I believe in if I'm playing bowling defense is something called scorched oil policy. If I can't throw the shot, neither can anybody else. <laughs> let's bring in the urethane, let's completely wipe this out, and then let's make this a who can make spares contest. The only thing I would say about that is, is that sometimes you can, when you're down, your, your, your job is try to get back in the game. If he was throwing it good with the urethane, that'd be different. He's not. And he's not even throwing on Chuck or Kelsey's that, line. Well, I was going to say, maybe that's his way to get into the game, except, and you said it correctly, that ball then is not going into either Chuck and Kelsey's line. In order for this to be effective, that's where the ball's got to go. Exactly, and I don't think it's that dry out there where he should be using that, but that's another it's definitely story. definitely not dry. Not now, anyway. Here's that shot for Frank for the frame. No. Once not again, bad. he's pressing. He's bringing his hand across his body. Watch, that's a urethane ball. Why are you going Brooklyn with a, I'm sorry, Philly? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're in South Jersey. We're not going Brooklyn anymore. Okay. We're going Philly. Why would you go Philly with a urethane? And for all the people from New York that, that are going to be whining at me <laughs> for saying Philly, you know, it's once in a while we got to, from give, a geographical standpoint, yeah, we got to be equal opportunity ge geographicians, cartographers, as they say with the map. We got to exactly. be equal opportunity. So, Motown Philly back, back again. again. <laughs> All right, and everybody's staring at us. We'll stop singing now, we promise. <laughs> Kelsey's still there, fifth frame. 
again, I do like the strategy because if you can get the lead big enough, you can do flip-flop, flip-flop at the end, it won't matter. Ooh, mm. almost, four pin. Now I would think about tagging the truck. No, I wouldn't. I would let Kelsey finish this frame. Well, I'll make the spare, but I mean, yeah. next frame I would yeah, think next about frame. having No, Kelsey. I would actually let Kelsey board again and let Chuck come back on a four frame, on a four, on lane four and lane uh, six. Yeah, but I I'm... I mean, seven, I'm sorry. Maybe? I don't know. I'm already up by... Assuming I make the spare, I'm already up by 20. How many, how many times have spares? they tagged? How many times have they tagged so far? Zero. Zero. Oh, okay. This is why I would bring in Chuck now, and there he is. Being as that's though they're up by 20, frame. but the thing is, to me, that's not enough. You're, you're it wouldn't be enough if it was the eighth or ninth frame. Right. But well, the other thing is this. Hell yeah, right now, doesn't have a look anywhere. Are you saying they're clueless? I'm not saying that. I'm saying they don't have a look. Yeah, it sounds like you're saying they're clueless. They're not like Prince. I'm not, I'm not Alicia Silverstone. I'm like Prince, they don't have that look. <laughs> what did I tell you about on you this frame here on look. lane three? I said, Kelsey yeah, should throw the ball on there. But it's a makeable spare. Like I said, nothing is is a gimme. Five pin. Do I bring the powder out of the car? We did not do it for Rex. Or are we going to do it for Chuck? Let's see if Chuck will pick this five pin up. No pressure. I, I have faith that Chuck will make a five pin. Oh. <laughs> Chuck almost fell. Chuck almost fell over once again. Ch Chuck, He's going to Chuck the line too fast. Over. He's going to the line too fast. So t uh, lane approaches because it looks like that you're okay. That's what we're. Which it looked like you've been struggling so far the whole entire game with the lane approaches. But when yeah, you but you throw better strikes when you slow down. Which of course is because of the lane approaches, correct? Yes, yes sir. Okay. I win. Meanwhile, while, while Malachi is being his best unbiased self. I'm trying. You no, know you're not. Rex is looking for a double here to make the game that much closer. And he doesn't what? get it. Six men. Double what? Double Frankenberry? No, that's Rex. I know. I got open here. I'm not brain, being brain, biased. Brain is, no, of course not. <laughs> you're not being biased. You're just not getting the names of hell yet correct. But that's okay. That is true. Well, they're not right, from my division. Over to Rex. No, I, I know I did that on purpose, but yeah. Uh huh. I know who right, Rex that's is. That's tag number two in the seventh frame. Over for usual suspects. Rex is the machine. So we we finally see a strike on Hell Yes side, except they did not follow it up, which means still up by 20 pins. Yeah. Usual suspects. Now yeah. keep in mind, again, only one tag by usual suspects. So I'm a little bit surprised that Charles is up here. So well, again, eight, nine, ten will be tags two, three, and four if that's the situation. They, they always like the. Like, th that could be a major mistake. Come to tell end. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Three, six, ten over for Chuck, and as he said before, he is not thrilled with the footing. It's one of the reasons why he's had to change his ball delivery. I'm not going to say I told you so to Malachi, but. I still disagree. You can I think, disagree I, all I, you want. I we got it. We got I it from really, the bowler himself. Listen to me. He's thrown strikes on that pair. And he didn't he didn't have no problem with his footing then, so I don't want to hear it now. What I'm looking at is it's an it's an excuse. He's bringing he's rushing to the line. Uh, this is a person that you that you like as a friend. Good job. Well, see the thing anyway, is, he'll make the spare. I'm hard on Go, all my friends. Yeah. Well, you're also the same person that that has eight favorite teams in the NFL. That, that is you talk true. About every week in social media, <laughs> I like the Eagles, the Giants, the 49ers. Not the Eagles. Not the Eagles. That's the, let's get that right. <laughs> Not the Ravens. Eagles. I might have to root for them this year, though. Lions, I do like the team, but that's a different story. The Jets. I'm sorry. Oh, and the Saints, yes. Oh, they stink. Talk about, oh, they stink. What doesn't stink is a ball by Kelsey Hammond, which is a strike. Usual suspects up by 17 with a strike in the eighth, which means right now they still cannot get shut out. Going back to hell yeah. And hell yeah needs to start carrying at the end, or it's going to be, oh, no. Hell yeah, for confidence sake, they need to go back-to-back -back strikes. How many, how many tags right, does hell so yeah have is, left? Hell yeah, this would be tag number three. Three, that is coming correct. Coming up for Frank, going into the eighth frame. Kelsey came in. That was just number two for usual suspects. So right now, both teams look like what they have been doing is what they're going to continue to be doing, and 
Hey, there's a Philly shot. Philly special. Man. Now, big frame here in the ninth. Big frame here for Hell Yeah. If they can throw a strike somewhere, somehow, if, yeah, somehow, and double, and it doesn't matter where, it could be in Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, Queens, Jupiter, it doesn't matter. If they can do it, they're just going to start to put some pressure on usual suspects. They really need to. If it was me, I would be trying to, I would let Rex throw this ball here, but it's not me. Well, if Rex comes back in, that's tag number four. They're done. Ninth frame here, looking to double up. Like I said, Ooh. I would have let Fre Rex come back in the game. Yep. He saw he had a better look on three. Yep. And now you have a split. Now you're guaranteed not to win the game. Well, not a guarantee not to win the game, but they now need a ton of help from usual suspects. Usual suspects will have to open in the 10th, 9th, and 10th frame. They'll have to open in the 9th and the 10th. Exactly, and I don't think that's going to happen. Not the way Kelsey has been bowling. How many, yeah, tag, how many tags does uh, Kelsey and, and Chuck have to make They only now? have two, so Kelsey just went. So you need Chuck to bowl in the 9th and Kelsey to bowl in the 10th. So that's, that's another way that they can screw this up. Let's see what they do. I think they're talking about it again. So Chuck now is up. Yeah, I was going to say, they, just, just a reminder, they can ask, I'm not going to tell them, but they can ask me, and I will give them the answer. You're like but a again, cheat code. I am the cheat code. But, the, but I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, you got to be bowling up here. Yes, we don't want to interfere in the match. Well, we can't interfere in the match. You like to, Mr. Unbiased Commentator, no, but I'm, I'm definitely not, not going go. to. I would never do that. Ninth frame here, a strike pretty much ends this one. Ooh. Oh, and I was going to say an open one. Oh, boy. Now, just to show you, usual suspects up by 17. Should they open here and the 10th, and they, Hellier strikes out, Hellier will take this game, will be tied at two, and it'll be like, well, that's what, what that's just what, hold, happened hold, hold, here? Hold your horses, hold your horses, Gordon. Even if they miss this up, this 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 pickup, they still be up by 17. They would. Hellier but still has to strike. They, they do, but they won't but because they won't. he makes a spare. Exactly. So I believe the magic number, if my math is correct, and it usually is, is six. Yes, I, I would agree with you. Except, again, the wrong person is coming up there throwing their first ball in the 10th frame. Hey, we're not their father and mother. <laughs> we're not their parents, so what can we say? I think we make really weird parents. Yes. It would be fascinating if you and I were both parents of the same kids. Oh, Lord. So that's now. That's enough. It's err, but they still win. Except in big except here. That's the who. That that's who. Be okay, the ball. I was, okay, say, going I was about to say who's going to who's going to pick that up. And what I find this is really appropriate is that ZZ Top Sleeping Bag is currently playing, which is one of my favorite songs of all time, by the way. And I also say it because Kelsey is about to put this game to bed. It was already to bed before she got up there, but you're right. Well, no, because she still has to throw the ball. If it's oh, chucked that through the ball and, 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 and misses. Miss. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Then they are, then it's put to bed for a different reason. I was just saying that because, because she was already she well, was you're already correct. up. Well, you correct. Mathematically, yeah. the game's out. Okay, but that's true. Kelsey still has to throw the ball. That's true. And I saw her going up there. That's the only reason why I said that. But you're right. It's over now. Well, it's not over now yet. That's because a lot they of pressure. Still up three to one. That's a lot of pressure to be down three to one. It is. You're not getting a good look. You're using a urethane ball. You're fishing to see what kind of ball to use. That's not good. By the way, we finally got a 200 from either team in game four. 178, 166, 191, 181. I'm sorry, no, 223. They had game three. 201 is game four. I take that back. That's the second 200 in this match. And right now, I will guarantee you, usual suspects will have two. And I will also guarantee you, hell yeah, will have zero at the end of four because mathematically, they can't get to 200. The UBA Vixens North champion, f former champion, she has a very good look on this shot, on, on this match here. No, you're throwing the ball very well. Now that I got these approaches figured out, because these approaches were capital T rash. Guess what? Dumpster I, fire? I uh, think, literally. I personally think watching you, your, your feet is the same way. You're just throwing the ball much better. You're following through, and you're making a world of a difference. You allow Chuck to calm down and relax. Which okay, gave so him, uh, which gave, will enable him to see the lanes better. Okay. Well, let, me, let me ask you this question: Is Chuck really relaxed right now? 
I think so, yeah. I think he's really not that. I mean, is he... Game one, he was not relaxed. I don't think either, either one of us were. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody was. Hello. Like, between all four of us, That's to be correct. honest with you, because trying to figure out... Oh, oh. nice pickup. Um, to even get... Now you got to figure out timing, because the stickiness, is, it was disgusting. So it's like... Now you got to figure out timing, which is something you don't want to do in the middle of, a, you know, the start of a match. But at least we figured it out, so it's good. Um, Chuck is calm. I've seen Chuck not calm. Can I ask you a question? Hmm? In terms of strategy, what, what's your strategy in this match? Yeah, you start. You start. Let's go. Let's go. What's your strategy in this match? I mean, I think we, what we learned from the North versus South uh, at Mega Bowl is that whoever has the better look needs to stay in a little bit longer because that was our problem. I had a better look down at Mega Bowl and Chuck didn't, and that was our mistake. But I think communicating, talking about it, and keeping the person in a little bit longer, that has the better look. But I think right now. Well, without, the reason why I asked you that is because Gur and I noticed that you were bowling, you first started off bowling good on lane three, but now you bowl good on both lanes. Yeah, I feel like Chuck better. is still having trouble bowling on lane three. Yeah. All right, so when, when the push come to shove, I, we were wondering that, if that ever entered into your mind. No. Maybe he just needs to make an, a change. I think once he gets back here, I'm going to say, hey, let's, let's try to make an adjustment. Because they're, I mean, they're solid tens, but he's, well, all right, well, shake it off. But um, if we can make the adjustment for him to try to get that 10 out, I think that's what we need to do for now. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'll let you focus back on the match since Chuck, uh, now you may, may need to go calm him down again. <laughs> usual suspects, and, and you could make an argument that this match should have been over with usual suspects taking game one if they communicated better in game one because we thought at the end of game one they were both in a spot of trouble. It is now Hell Yeah that is in a deep spot of trouble as we start with Frank going in. There's three games left. And Hell Yeah is going to give the open right back over to Usual Suspects. There's three games left. Hell Yeah needs to win all of them. The margin of error is zero, or in the case of one Jonathan Dansbury, who, by the way, we'll be seeing soon in a future matchup, El Chipo. Well, being as though Usual Suspects have an open in the first frame along with this double, it could be even after if Frank happens to pick up these two pins. And Charles will be very happy with even at this point. Ooh. Almost made the spare. It's always an adventure with Frank. Well, I think it's all, it's an adventure with everybody right now. The footing is still uh. T, T rash in terms of what Kelsey said. But maybe the difference in this match has been Kelsey and Chuck has sort of figured out the footing and what to do, and I'm not necessarily sure either Schofield has. I agree. I think Kelsey, maybe not Chuck. Well, maybe. But... Right now, if only one person figures it out, that may be the important thing. Right. Frank's and looking to figure out lane three in game two, and there's a three pin. Much more makeable than what he left in frame one. I agree. I think that with the way that uh, Chuck and uh, Kelsey are bowling right now together, if, the, if with their strategy of letting whoever has the better look bowl even more, I think that it's, it's, it's really, you know, really showing out to be very, very positive as far as I'm concerned. Frank's looking to make the spare. Oh, my goodness. It's one thing if you're going to leave a split. It's another thing if you're going to miss a pin right in the middle of the lane. Somebody need to call the cops. Somebody got robbed that nah, time. No, it's self-mugging. Self <laughs> yeah, Se you might self be Self-induced right. mugging. Self-induced. Uh, no, and, and hell yeah has had more than enough opportunities in this one. They've made a lot of mistakes. Let's see what happens on this and lane this because this is Chuck's one. lane. Out of trouble. You heard that. Everybody yeah, was saying everybody that. Said, right. Out of trouble. But see, sometimes when, when another team opens, that can that can put a lot of pressure on you because you know that you want to close it. You want to close that frame with a I strike. I wouldn't say pressure. I would say adrenaline. Like for me, if I see, and there's been more than enough times where I've seen my opponent open and I'm up, and the only thing in my mind is I want to make you pay for the transgression that you just committed on the lanes. Now, let me explain to you why I said pressure. The pressure comes in that because Chuck has, doesn't feel comfortable today bowling. And so now he wants to make the shot. That's the only reason why I said yeah, that. But I don't think it would matter it's whether it's a strike though. or an open. Yeah. yeah. I, I do agree with you that there's pressure, but maybe a little bit less when he goes, okay, I can bleep this up because I know that my opponent has <laughs> opened. Yeah, that's right. 
so there's not as much. But at the same time, and here's where you're not wrong, you're thinking, as you said, I want to get the lead. I want to put more pressure on my opponents. I want to. I, I like the red numbers and the horizontal dashes. Let's keep doing that. That's correct. So as he said, safe. No, no split this time. He's got a four seven. Even though again, the issue wasn't the split. The issue is that he missed a corner pin. Yes. He's got another corner pin, but it's the different corner pin. Well, at least it's on to his advantage because it's to the left side instead of the right yes. side. Yes. As, as the righty, you want to see 4-7. You don't necessarily want to see a 10 pin. As long as you convert it, which he will. Yes, he did. Chuck throws the ball hard, so getting the ball down there has never been the issue. Frank is up. This is his third frame. He third. actually may feel fortunate that he's only going to be down by around nine pins, assuming the marks. If he strikes, it happens to double. They'll be even. And when you start open, open, it could be even in the fourth frame. You'll take that every day of the week. Like I said, Bo dealing with Frank has always been an adventure. That time he dropped his speed. Had he followed through and kept his speed up, he probably could have got a strike that time. I think right now he's just, he's more, I understand where you're coming from. I think that he's more worried about, let me get a friggin' spare, at least get on the board. I think they just want to, they just want to, they just want to, they one, just want to get it to Rex so they can exactly. tag. Yeah, well, they also want to get it to Rex, I think. We'll yeah. see if Rex is tagged in. And yes, there he comes, fourth frame. Get hell yeah, must win this one. If you just joined us, we're in the middle of game four. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're in the middle of game five. It is three, one, usual suspects. Hell yeah, must win this one and the next two, or the champs stay champs. Four, seven up there. I would be talking to my, my teammate and say, look, we just got to go one ball at a time. Don't worry about nothing else. Don't worry about how many games we're down. Let's do one at a time and see what happens. We both have to throw good balls each time. Got to win game five. If you don't, there's no game six. Exactly. But what I do is I scale it down so that you, we're not putting too much, thinking about too many things. Just worry about that one thing. Looks like he'll make the spare. He will. It's a shame that we have to wonder, are they going to pick up the spare? That's not a shame. Sometimes bowling is like that. You know, some chick, chicks dig the long ball, as they say in baseball, <laughs> but sometimes, like the Yankee-Tampa Bay game, I don't know who won, but it was 0-0 going into ninth frame. That's true. Sometimes you get an offense, sometimes you get defense, and sometimes you get this. This is about to get interesting because Chuck needs to pick this I mean, spare the, the games have been close also. It's, it's not like either team's been flattening their opponent or running away with it. I mean, the first game was decided by 12 pins. Second game, we all know what happened there. If, if they didn't open, right. it's there. The third game. That was the only the, sizable. The, the, the third game was the only one that was solid. In the fourth right. game, the, both teams had their chances until the end. Right. This game also is looking like that could be a game that either team's going to have chances on this. Is Wallace going to be able to pick up the spare? No. Both teams with two opens and four frames, and we've got potentially a 56-56 tie. Actually, I'm sorry, no, 56-54. Potentially, if, if hell yeah throws a strike here, they'll go ahead in this match. Potentially. Yes, potentially. Frustration also can get the best of you because it takes away your focus on the match. Chuck, right now, fifth frame, that ball looks good, it is. I don't know if that was technique or if that was just anger. That looked more like anger than technique there on that shot. I might have to agree with you, <laughs> Gordon, because you didn't see him get stick, stuck at the line No, either. you did not. Mm -hmm. and, and you saw him just rifle that ball down the lanes. Angry Chuck. <laughs> now are you going to get angry Rex? Well, Finally get a light hit with everything going down. Angry I, Rex. I don't know if that's angry, though. He might be born like, and he tags Frank. He tags Frank, his brother Frank, back in. I don't understand their strategy. To me, Rex just threw the first strike of this game for hell yeah, and then they tag Frank back in. Who's throwing a urethane ball? I don't know. Did, did well, I that's, miss that's something? That's tag number. I don't know. That's tag number two. Yeah, but did I miss something though? Well, what you missed so far is the tag for Kelsey in this game because so far there hasn't been any. 
That is true. I mean, technically, it is a tie game going into the sixth frame. Maybe there, he's going to see, maybe if Frank has a look, I do agree with you. I probably would have stuck him in there for the sixth frame. And if he didn't get a strike, then tag Frank in, then tag Frank in for, for a mid-frame tag. And Frank is not an automatic when it comes to picking up a spare. Not so. on the right-hand side. He hasn't been. Not today. Nope. Back over to Chuck. Now we're going to see Kelsey's now first appearance Kelsey. in this game. That is tag number one for usual suspects. They have three more to go. Kelsey saw it right now. If she's looking to double up, she does. What I tell you? Is, that is a clear-cut example of tagging done correctly between Kelsey and Chuck versus tagging done, I'm not going to say incorrectly, but I'm going to say maybe questionable, yes. versus Frank and Rex. Now, the question now is, well... And now they're keeping Kelsey in there, and as you said, this is what they should be doing. Yes. Then I would tag again for... for well, they're not going to have a choice. We're already in the seventh frame. Eight, nine, yeah. ten. Like look, what they've been doing. Look, we know, but that doesn't mean that it'll, it'll take place. You know, and there's a bucket. So a chance that they had to put the th foot on the throat of Hell Yeah does not materialize. And the lead is still under 10 pins. And if she doesn't make the spare, the lead is non-existent. That is correct. Anything can happen in this game. Now, Chuck Chuck's says, thank you, bowling, bowling gods. gods. <laughs> I, I think the bowling gods have come in spades for usual suspects today. Especially today. I was going to say, the, the gods, that hasn't been the only godlike appearance in this matchup for usual suspects. <laughs> Maybe the end of the second game, that might have helped. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Apollo, the god of 10th frame, or Hades, the god of 10th frame mishaps. It's Frank. That shot looks good. It is. That's Frank's second best shot today. Now, if hell yeah could double the eighth frame, they will take the lead going into the ninth. The question is who's going to shoot it, and the answer is Rex. That is tag number three. They have one more tag. So that means we're looking at possibly Rex taking the next three three ball three uh, rolls. Frank, uh, if, theoretically, that's exactly what they can do, Frank. Rex can go out the door, and Frank only has to throw the last shot. And they make it, ooh, ooh. no, seven pin. I was about to say, they may keep him in there if he keeps throwing strikes, but there's a seven pin that said, hello. What I see with, with, with Rex is that's that. That's Apollo, by the way. You're talking about the bowling guys. I think that's Apollo or um, <laughs> may, maybe Hera over there. Oh, okay. What I see uh, Frank and uh, Kelsey do when, when, that, when their ball doesn't finish the shot is because they're not underneath the ball. Rex they're, will make the spare. Yeah, he made the spare. But what's happening is they're they're extending their hand out, but they're not cupping the ball at least a little bit to get the ball to, to get a nice hook on the ball. Yeah, I'm, and, and again, I will wonder, like Chuck said, how much of that has to do with the approaches? Once again, I think today is more of an excuse. They've been bowling on these lanes so far already, so they should be very familiar with the ball at this point in time. Well, they're familiar. Chuck's familiar with the 3-6-10. He's seen that a couple of times. Hmm. This should be interesting because that's not an easy spare to pick up if you don't hit the six pin directly. Uh, it, it is not an easy one to pick up. And again, he's got to, he has to make this in order for them to hold on the lead. Yes, he does because they, they're only up by one point if he picks this up. And we are running out of frames in this game. This is a game that Hell Yeah desperately needs to win in order to prolong this match. Hell Yeah just needs and to right keep. Right now they're not winning it. Another Chuck spare from up. Chuck. Very good, Chuck. So, looking at strategy down the line. Not much of a strategy for usual teams, suspects. Do both of the teams have three uh, tags or no, or what? Well, no, they only have two. Now it's going to be tag number three when Kelsey comes in. Okay. Now both teams have three tags. Now we have some strategy. Obviously, Kelsey's got to bowl the ninth. The question becomes, and I know what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. The question becomes, how long do you keep both Rex and Kelsey in there? And I believe your answer is going to be until the next bowlers, which is Chuck and Frank, have to throw the last shot of the game. Exactly. And once again, like I said before, Kelsey throw the ball on lane three. She strikes. Chuck is going to be the key if he needs to throw his first ball in the 10th frame. It has to be a strike, especially if well, Rex Chuck throws a strike here. Well, but Chuck doesn't have to do that. 
Well, because this is tag three. So it, all Chuck has to do now is throw the last ball. Right. But so see, you can what I'm keep saying, Kelsey in there in the first frame, in, in that tenth frame. That's but true. I know what you're saying. If if mm. if Chuck has to throw a strike, in this case he does not because that ten pin means he doesn't have to. That is correct. That ten pin also means that Rex has to pick it up. That Rex, well, yes, it does have to pick it up. If he picks it up, they're only down by two going into 10th frame. The one big difference between Hellia and Usual Suspects is that Usual Suspects will be going into that, into the 10th frame with a strike. Hellia will be going in with a spare. Oh, no, he'll be going in with an open. Oh, my goodness. So here's what the situation is. Usual Suspects is on a strike. That automatically puts him in 20 plus. Hell yeah, must, and I repeat, must, throw a double in the 10th frame, probably all all three, and then hope that Usual Suspects makes one of the biggest mistakes in the universe Look, at any, this point. Anything can happen. Anything can. However, what, what will happen is that if this ball is not a strike, it is almost game set and match for Usual Suspects. This ball certainly needs to be there, and he's nowhere near the head pin. Good night, Irene. Yep. I mean, mathematically, the game is not over, but, and a big but here, usual suspects don't need a mark. No, they don't. They just need, they just need the magic number. So now, in this case, I just put Chuck in there. I don't even, I don't yuck around. Oh. I put Chuck in there. I, I tell Kelsey, you know, go drink some iced tea somewhere. Enjoy. Go look up an escape room. Maybe we can all do one of those later on this evening. Let's see what they do. Because, again, the only way that this goes to a game six is if they screw the tags up. So that I is don't true. even know why they're doing this right now at this point. Let's keep it quiet, Gordon. Let's see what, let I'm them make quiet. the decision. Of course. There's a strike mathematically. That is game. And, and they tag. here comes Chuck. Looks like Kelsey tag. Yep, that'll be it. Once he throws his ball... The game will be over. Usual suspects win four to one. Correct. Now, the thing that I would do if, if I was uh, hell yeah, I would I would look at this as an opportunity, as a learning experience. What could I have done differently? What we could what could we have done differently, especially in game Not two? Not open to the tenth frame. Exactly. That's true. I mean, it, it's it's Westbrook. It's there. You had the opportunity early on in this game, and I will say this right now: the turning point of the match was the tenth frame. Game two. That is hell, correct. Hell yeah, it was up one zip. They needed a mark. Then they're up two zip, and then you then you may not have given them time to relax and calm down. Exactly. Sometime when you let a champion get back up, they stay up. Usually that's what happens, and that's what happened today. At the end of game five, usual suspects 184. Hell yeah, 153. Usual suspects wins 4-1, and the champs stay champs. And uh, it's time for a little interview time. Going to wrap this one up. I almost thought you were going to be falling over in that, in that game. Now, Kelsey told me that you finally figured it out in terms of the footing and the approaches, and you told me that earlier. What was the solution? Slow down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just slow your feet down, or you'll stick every shot. So, it was just terrible. Yeah. But we figured it out. Thank God. So, did the turning point in the match come? Because I thought it came 10th frame, game two. They had a chance to go up two zip. 5-10 shows up. Did that sort of take give you a take? Exactly, yeah. So, talk to me about that. Definitely took the pressure off. Because same thing happened to us first game. 10th frame, need a shot, win the game, and we split. And it came right back to them. <laughs> so, thank you. Goes back and forth. Now, you're telling me before, you, you are the Chuck Whisperer, so to speak. You know, you calmed him down. <laughs> I, wasn't, no, we I, still I wasn't angry today. No, this is, yeah. No, this, you're, this, this was not, yeah, I've, I've seen you angry. That was, this was definitely not, not angry Chuck. It was frustrated Chuck. Yeah. Not angry Chuck. But it seems like the key, and now I've seen a couple of your matches. The key for your team to win, equilibrium. Talk to me about that. Like between Chuck and I? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we both, we are both, um, I don't know if he'll, we are both hotheads. So I think it's as long as we both can talk, if, yeah, Caffeine should know this, I am a hothead and Charles is too, so we equal each other out in that sense. But um, 
I think if we just continue to talk to each other, I think we had the most communication today in any of our matches that we've had. Um, I know, like where our, our, our stuff, how we were running our matches was good, but we're like, no, we actually really need to talk and come up with better strategies now. But I think what was wrong is I don't know, always know how to talk to somebody when they're angry, and I don't think anybody knows how to talk to me when I'm angry. So having to just uh, man up and tell Chuck to, hey, you know, we should do something different here. And vice versa when he tells me that. So I think just uh, talking to each other. I'm, not, I'm actually going to say something different. I'm going to sort of contradict you from what you said earlier when I asked you what did you learn about the Mega Bowl match, and you said nothing. I want to get I want to get rid of that. I actually think from a communication standpoint, you definitely learned something from that match because if you didn't have that match, the old Chuck, if that was based on that, you'd be down there off. Ordering an iced coffee down there on uh, lanes 37, 38, whereas new Chuck over here. Meanwhile, I'm trying to find my footing because this is sticky yeah, going over here. Bad, this, this is, is the not worst good. We've, ever, we've bowled a match on. This is definitely the worst. But shout out to Corona for slowing me down. This match was sponsored by Corona. <laughs> yeah, but but in all seriousness, I really thought the communication, as Kelsey said, that was there, and maybe you did learn something in March. Just saying. Yeah, I just want those guys to hold on to the belts because I want a rematch. Because that was not us. We want a rematch for sure. So that's why we're going to try to keep belts till then. You definitely can do it. Any last thoughts, comments, any shout outs, anything you want to say? Chuck. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> um, Final thoughts. Hey, Mom. Thanks for our usual suspects that are watching. Thanks, Malachi. Hey. Um, thanks to all the usual suspects that are watching. Um, I'm going to say thank you to Storm. I think Chuck should probably say thank you to... I'll say thanks to Brunswick. Yeah, so, but I'm going to say Storm. This is... Yeah, whatever. This is a good continue battle between us. But uh, thank you, Caffeine TV, for watching. Anthony, you're the bomb.com. Um, yeah, that's it. And thanks, Ren, for calming me. Shout out to the Kaboom. So, for congratulations again, Chuck and Kelsey. Again, for Anthony from Alki, this is Gordon signing off. Uh, at the end, usual suspects hold on to the belts by 4-1 to one score. This is Gordon Pepper signing off, UBA all day. Good night.